The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 288 Cold, Colder. Valet crawled up a staircase, having decided that, as nice as pampering and a ride out would be, she would regret it if waiting earned a case of frostbite for her hooves. All four of them were icy, and she had been ready to drag herself along on her belly, but the numerous jagged rocks and shards of glass on the floor and below the snow were a sharp detriment to that plan. She felt raw enough from clinging to the hole's edge as it was. So instead she crawled, moving limb by jellied limb, and waiting to ensure they wouldn't give out under her. She reached the first ear, found herself face to face with a giant gap where the floor had been smashed out beneath her in the fight, and saw Dior skirting the edge, making his way toward her. Their eyes locked. Ambi says to tell you he doesn't have any able-bodied massage mares, he shouted over the nearby wind. He also said you couldn't move. Do you still need help? Valet glanced at a dull soundstone under her good wing. It had ran out of power shortly after their exchange. No, oh, I totally can't move. This is... Uh, cheating. The foreleg with the burned hoof gave out and she tipped over, catching herself against the wall. And hey, don't worry about it. You're the next best thing. Did I bring my sandwich? No, Dior grunted, reaching her and using his orange telekinesis to help lift her onto his back. And I did not bring a chef with him. Now bear with me, because I'm not particularly athletic. Taking careful, heavy steps, he made his way back to the second balcony and then the third. The shelter was lesser there, and Valet saw Arambai, Starlight, and Shinespark inside a waiting alcove by a section of roof that was somehow still standing. The wind blew just overhead, but didn't scoop down into the exposed bowl of the atrium like a cat waiting to pounce. That's it? Valet raised a frosty eyebrow, hugging Dior for warmth. I know we've never met, so maybe you're crazy strong. But did you really bring only yourself as backup? And by side, I told the Bluely folks to stay home, figured it'd only be a liability. Elise stayed with them, since without her horn, she's not much. A few defense force followed me up until you made contact, and then even they went home. Smart, really. If Iron Ridge is about to be invaded by helpful yaks, this is the worst possible battleground for it. I've been binding Sharnsburg's legs so I can carry her. Starlight can walk, and apparently you're one of the good guys now. He glanced up at the howling sky. Gotta admit, Sharnsburg didn't speak too glowingly of you in her letters, but you can never tell if that means you're actually a dirtbag or just a crush. Yes. Sharnsburg weakly protested, awake and lucid, and I still stinging with pain. She focused on Valet. You... but Pendant... how... None of your business, Valet growled, hugging Dior tighter. Do you mind, Dior hissed back. Your hooves are very cold. Valet shifted on his back. Yeah, that's kind of the point. The point is, we should be getting out of here. Ambi stood up, his aura forming around Shinespark and slowly lifting her. Can't say I'm entirely sad to see this place go, but I'd like to not go with it. We can continue our reunion somewhere safer and hopefully try diplomacy with the yaks. Dad... Shrinespark looked hurt. The spirit. Granada. They're still? Arambai glanced over to the tunnel to the boarding room. All right, then. They got ten seconds to come out, play nice, and come with us. But I care about you lot a little more than them. Valet counted. By second three, there was nothing but a curtain of falling snow. By second seven, she looked away. I see something, Shrinespark yelped. Dad! Hmm? Arambai growled, looking up in interest. Valet followed his gaze. There were ponies coming. Ponies carrying ponies. Four and all were standing, and as they drew closer, she could see their horns glowing, using a mix of telekinesis and their backs to carry or drag other ponies with them, most of them with weapons still affixed to their bodies. One of them had a taller frame that glinted gold in the light. Brain's armor. Look, one shouted, perking up. Other ponies! Another blanched. Who else is up here but us? If they're defense force, then we surrender and hope as hard as we can for mercy. Huh. Aaron by levitated Shinespark carefully, stepping forward. Looks like his spirit did survive after all. For a given definition of survive, at least. Shinespark's eyes watered, and she was speechless. No! There's Shinespark! She's alive? One perked up, and they all listened, stumping eagerly forward under the loads. And they drew up one by one. You're Aaron by, aren't you? 
Ambi nodded. What are you doing back? A chunky stallion asked, wonder in his eyes. You've been gone for years. Have you come to save Sosa? Shinespark, the mayor in the golden armor said, bowing. Our side won. The ones that wanted to listen to you. I know I shouldn't be wearing this out of respect for Brain, but it was the only way to bring it with us. We, we left it dead. She hiccuped. And I haven't seen Granada. Please forgive us. We just want to go home. That's sounding like a common refrain these days, Dior muttered. Join us. We can discuss matters of justice once we're back in the Stone District. The storm has subsided and we can inspect the extent of the damages. As they talked, Valet beckoned for Starlight, calling the filly over. Her saddlebags were still on and, mercifully, packed with spare sandwich supplies looted from the Sky Freeze Cafe. Can't get me a sandwich, my butt, Valet grumbled, not bothering to assemble them, as she stuffed bread and lettuce and gourmet toppings into her mouth by the hoofful. Oh, that feels good. Ermbai had hefted several injured ponies on his back, using his mostly recovered telekinesis to carry Shinespark, freeing the exhausted, injured spirit ponies to attend to their weapons and injuries on their own. The group started moving, taking several steps through the snow to the Stone District exit. Then they were interrupted by a shout. Hail, friends! Gerardo Guillon's voice came from a far corner of the smashed atrium, and with a flurry of wings, the griffin soared near, eyes widening in confusion as he drew into sight. Starlight and Valet? We left you in safety, not... His beak dropped open. Erenby? Whatever are you doing here? I told you, Erenby winked. I could probably get that teleporter to send me back to Ironridge at a pinch if anything needed beating up that badly. But it looks like you kids had it covered. He held out the soundstone taken from Selma. Here's this, by the way. I'd love to study it if you don't want it, since it's pretty unusual technology, but let's save that for another time. Right now, we're getting out of here. With us? Gerardo held a talent to his breast. Much as I'd love to, myself and my prison compatriots are on a mission to, um, uh, prevent damage to the skyport caused by the potentially renegade spirit of Sousa. His eyes drifted upward then to the weary spirit ponies, though, by the look of things, we're too late for the battle. I'll say, Valet muttered from atop Dior's back. The spirit kicked their own rears, but you totally missed me trashing Herman. Herman is gone? Gerardo looked incredulously at her. And he was here? Last I saw him, he was at the top of the dam commanding the defense force. How much has happened while we've been flying around? And where's Maple? Starley demanded, biting Dior's tail so she didn't get lost. And back at the ship, Gerardo assured her, it handles smoothly and appears immune to this weather, so I have full confidence in her safety. It was how we got up here, even. Vili sighed. So that ship really worked, huh? Lame. I could've gotten a free ride up here. Hold on a minute. Ambi glanced suspiciously at Gerardo. What ship are you talking about here? Gerardo blinked. Ah, yes, that might be prudent to mention. We discovered a power source for your ship from the Earth District Warehouse, and it seems fully operational. Shinespark and Ambi both gaped. Also, Gerardo noted as a significant number of figures drew into sight in the snow behind him, also, Gerardo noted as a significant number of figures drew into sight in the snow behind him. I should clarify that by we, I mean myself, several members of both the Defense Force and Spirit of Sosa, all sixteen mercenaries we dueled in the Flame District, and a pair of mildly eccentric yaks. Seeing everyone's reactions, he quickly added, all on the same side. The Spirit saw each other first. As the two battered parties reunited, swapping tears and stories and explanations of why Ermbai was there and how they had survived, not even caring whether they were on the same side, the mercenaries stuck to themselves, watchful and wary amid the snow. But everyone who had been present for the fight against Herman, Ermbai included, were purely interested in the yaks. Yak Xander! One broad, smiling yak explained, completely oblivious to the mistrust sown in the ponies' faces. And this Priscilla! Hello, Ponpons! Priscilla gazed around, looking extremely bored next to her eager, friendly companion. What are Ponpons doing all the way up here? The storm will turn you little guys into ice cubes. When they say Ponpons, they mean ponies, Gerardo quickly whispered aside. Also, we've been talking, and they seem quite amicable. Is there a reason for the dirty looks? It's hardly fair to condemn them simply because Herman was rotten. Xander and Priscilla. Dior stepped forward, trying his best to look respectable, despite having a trashed bat pony on his back. 
The recently deceased Ambassador Herman spoke of a military contingent accompanying a shipment here of some sort. Is this you? Xander pounded his hooves together. It's not yet primary job, but still certified expert at smashing things. Went through very expensive training program which almost broke Yak Piggy Bank. Why? Bonbons have things that need to be smashed? He looked up hopefully. Priscilla shoved him. I think he asked about the shipping. Oh! Xander turned slightly red, grinning apologetically. Fear not, Xander very good at shipping. Yaks were sent in advance to intercept top secret Yak government delivery. Xander and Priscilla went out after Rocket Land, but crash site was too cold even for thick hairy Yak wool. Probably magical reaction. So Yaks went to hide in a nearby building and wait for storm to blow over, so could go back and inspect rocket delivery. Hmm. Ermby sighed, staring critically at the two Yaks. See, your ambassador more or less said to our faces you were here to invade and take over the city. Something about a government official here to give you the okay? Priscilla stared back, voice a perfect monotone. We have a law that forbids invading cities. The ambassador was probably wrong. Well, actually, Xander nudged her nervously. Tell no one, but Yak have second cousin who works as government bureaucrat. Once got cover from them to break law and skip jury duty. So technically have gotten government okay to break law before. Priscilla chewed a mouthful of snow. Whatever you say. Valet eyed him carefully from atop Dior's back, then glanced at Ernby. You know, I'm pretty sure this isn't really invasion material. If these guys are friendly, could we continue this in the Stone District? I mean, for all I know, they'll help clean stuff up and then leave nicely. Yeah, Ernby resumed his march towards the exit. No matter what, we're getting out of here and resuming this when we're not in danger of freezing to death. This close to the storm, it's a wonder we're still up and talking. No one objected. Except Gerardo. I left the ship docked at the next terminal over. It seems to be weatherproof, but should I not return and pilot it somewhere out of range of the storm's wrath? After all, it is quite valuable, and I would rather see to Maple's safety myself. If you're feeling up to it, Ernby said, where are you going to take it that's safer, though? Right, this storm covers all of Iron Ridge, doesn't it? Gerardo's head quest lowered. Well, at the very least, I, at that moment they were interrupted by a desperate yell from the entrance. A pair of ponies soared in, or rather, a pony riding a pegasus, both covered by a large weather cloak. The pegasus was clearly flagging, and barely managed to make a safe landing before collapsing to the snowy floor. I'm so getting paid overtime for this, she complained, massaging her candy-colored wings. Is Herman here? The pony on her back asked frantically, climbing off, her cloak drawn so closely around her that it hid even her face. Please, he's not at the embassy. The defense force headquarters ordered them, which is already destroyed. This is important. Valet blinked, face crunching in recognition. Wait a sec. Fire? Is that you, girl? And did you get a ride from the embassy's one and only Maya? Yes, Fire gasped, a shrill note of worry in her voice. Valet, you work for Herman. Do you know where he is? I need to find him and ask him what's going on. I hope I'm not too late. Yeah, you might be too late, Valet informed her. Just a little. Unless you think Herman survived me impaling his heart with an icicle and a chunk of roof at once, then dropping him into a raging blizzard. And between you and me, if he lived for that, I quit. Oh no, Fire wilted. I needed to ask him about why the city is so violent. He's been assuring us that everything's stable, but there was just a fight over a dam that left thousands of ponies homeless and now I can answer that, Willie interrupted. Herman was a scumbag. That's all there is to it. He pretty much just bragged about spending his entire ambassadorship stirring up every last pony in Iron Ridge, getting them thinking like us and them, and trying to get them indoctrinated into fighting so we'd ask if Yak is to break some law thing and take over the city. True story. Fire pulled her hood down, letting her crystalline mane spill out around her shoulders. Everyone in the city? And he's been indoctrinating it for years? No. No. Why wouldn't he tell us? Why would he do that? Ernby put his hoof down. What's all this about here? You didn't know that Anridge was a place full of ponies that didn't quite like each other? We knew there were social tensions, but... Fire swallowed. Not that they ran high enough to lead to massive infrastructure attacks like these. Have ponies been fighting? There have been fights because of this, haven't there? The heavily battered spirit ponies looked dryly at her, covered in dried and occasionally fresh blood. The surviving defense force members looked much the same. No. Her eyes folded, and the light grew dimmer in her eyes. 
Then we're too late. Hello? Hey, Valet Bark, trying to be heard above the wind and the ponies chattering about her unusual sparkling appearance. Once again, once again, once again, what's all this about? You're kind of spooking me. Fire gulped again, tilting her head up toward the sky. Well, this storm. End of chapter 288